This video is especially for Kate, who was asking me about recording interviews via Skype. Now, I've done videos in the past about Pamela, but the current version of Pamela, professional version, is pretty different from the version I was videoing back a couple of years ago. I thought I'd make another video just to help her configure her Pamela for recording on Skype and give us some ideas of how things work. Now when you first open it up you've got Pamela and you'll have Skype open as well. One of the first things you want to do is configure your settings. So we're going to go to tools and options and one of the main things you want to do is go to call recording. Now, if you're going to record, it suggests and it's polite to tell the person you're calling that you are recording the conversation. I do it automatically because I don't want to forget to press record, but I verbally will tell people that I am recording. At least I hope I do. Video recording, if you uh, want to do video recording, you can decide how to save it when to use it, that sort of thing. But I, I tend not to record video. I don't have a great deal of reason to do video to video recording, except if I want to see somebody's face, which is very rare, or rather, I'd rather than they didn't see my face. Because usually when I'm doing Skype, it's late, late, late at night. I've got no makeup on. I look a total mess and I'm ready for bed. So my personal preference. Anyway, uh, call recording, warning message. Not going to worry about that. The bit you want is advanced. You need to adjust your sound level according to how it sounds. And I have found with this newer version of Pamela, in the old days with Pamela, when you were recording, you'd have a little um, icon, I suppose, in the corner of your recording window and it would show you what the levels were of your recording. I've yet to be able to find that on the current version of Pamela. If you know where it is, please let me know. But as far as I can see, when you're recording, you can't actually monitor the volume levels. So I have done it by trial and error, basically after testing a few phone calls and testing my mic and the other person's level from the other end of the phone call, I have changed my sound level adjustment. And actually it's very low, only 9% for my recording. So that's incredibly low. You might be way higher than that. So it's definitely worth testing it before you record an important interview. Don't just hit or miss with this. Now there is a test way you could do it. You could just call on uh, Skype. There's a test thing you can call. That's the one, Echo Sound Test Service. So you could do it that way and test it that way and record it and just check to see how high the levels are. Or you could call a friend on Skype and just test it that way. But definitely test it before you do an important recording. The other thing you want to do is to save the sound in stereo mode with each sound stream in a separate channel. This is important because it means that if one of you is slightly louder or softer, if there's a weird, maybe some background noise on one of your recordings, but not on the other. You can actually edit them separately and treat them separately before you mix them together. That just makes for a much better quality final recording. The next thing we're going to do is go down to advanced and choose our audio devices. Now, I automatically copy device settings from Skype. Unfortunately, Pamela doesn't always actually copy them across properly. So I usually find that before I record, I need to change my microphone settings. So whatever mic you're using, make sure that Pamela is detecting the right microphone and make sure that you're listening on the right headset, headphones, whatever you're using. In my case, it is this independent headphones. And you want to choose a recording format and there's lots of different things, well, four different options. I go with MP3 because it's a smaller file and I did at one point recommend WAV files, this one here. But as somebody pointed out, the audio is going to be compressed anyway. And especially if you're only recording simply to have a record. So in this case, Kate is going to produce this 
as a written interview, but wants a backup so that she can write the blog post and not miss anything out and, you know, quote somebody word for word. So the MP3 plugin will save the audio in a compressed format. It'll still be good quality uh, or good enough for publishing on the internet, but it won't take up as much space. And you want to click on configure codec. Now this is quite complicated. Uh, if you don't really understand what's going on here, then all I would say is a good sampling rate, not the highest quality, but a good quality is for the voice is 128 and 44 hertz. I did have it on 48, which is what I would use if I was recording voiceovers, but Pamela kept throwing up errors and it might happen to you because it happened to my friend as well. You suddenly get an error coming up saying the codec wasn't recognized. It was something about codecs or extensions not being found. Well, if that happens, go to configure codec and change it to 44, 100 and 128. If that still throws up the error, then just test out some of these different sampling rates. I really wouldn't go any lower than 22. In fact, if you're going, if you can't get 44, then try 22, but I wouldn't go any lower than that in quality. But that is probably what the, the issue is if Pamela says there is an error. So those are the main things you need to do in terms of setting it up to record. All these other things, very nice, but you probably aren't going to use them. And just the general settings you'll be able to see. Those, these will make sense to you or not, depending on whether you're going to use them. So you click apply, make sure all those are OK. And you're ready to record. Now, if you've set it up to record automatically, then when you dial a number, let's dial this. Pamela will start recording up here. You'll see it counting up and it's automatically recording. Now, as soon as you finish recording, if you end a call, then it will stop recording. If you want to stop recording, let's call that one again. See, it started a new recording. If you want to stop the recording or pause the recording, you can do that here. I'm going to stop the recording, but still keep the phone line open on Skype. And if I wanted to start recording again, then I click record again. And that just started playing in my ears, which totally confused me because I was hearing me talking back to me. So. It's as simple as that. And once you've got a recording, it will appear in your Skype recordings here. And it will also have saved to a default folder on your computer. So you will go into your Pamela folder and it will be call recordings. And you'll also find the call recordings saved there. Whatever you do, don't delete any of these unless you're absolutely sure you no longer need that recording. So I no longer need that one because that's just my test call. So I'm just going to delete that one. But if there's any that you want to work with or you haven't saved to a different location, then don't delete them from this list. I think that's everything. Any other questions, Kate, or anybody else, let me know. But that should be the main points of setting up and recording with Pamela.